Terry Eyes Green, a retired educator, is a mixed media artist of national acclaim. She is a member of the Colorado Watercolor Society and loves creating art in a variety of subjects, although flora and fauna are her favorite subjects. Light and color on natural forms capture my interest. Expressing these effects through art feeds my soul. Sherry is also known for her colorful equine art, as in the watercolor Out of the Shadow. And this painting, Little Dancer, which she's had imprinted on silk and cashmere scarves. One of her latest endeavors involves firing raccoon tiles in her outdoor studio in Mossos, Colorado. I make the tiles from a groggy clay and shape each to about six inches square. I create texture and movement by impressing the wet tiles with natural or found objects. They are dried slowly under weight to keep them from warping. When they are completely dry, they are fired in a pit. I strive to get the temperature to around 1200 degrees Fahrenheit. Firing outdoors, we ensure there is a nearby water source. For a hot and slow burn, the bottom of the pit is lined with aged manure. Leaves, twigs, and scrap wood are layered on top. Next, we fire it up. Hardwood and garden pruning scraps make a strong, hot blaze. We feed the fire and burn it down into coals. To avoid too much thermal shock to the unfired clay, I bring the tiles to a temperature up to 550 degrees over the course of several hours in my kitchen oven. When the tiles are preheated, I carry them to the fire pit. You may notice that some of the tiles have a wrap of aluminum foil, which adds extra color. Tiles go into the fire pit one at a time. added as needed to keep the fire hot, rebuilding it on top of the tiles. We want the temperature to get up to about 1200 degrees Fahrenheit. There's a lot of kindling ash and hot coals on top of the clay tiles. When the tiles have been in the blaze for about an hour, manure is added on top to achieve a hot, slow burn. Then the pit is covered with dirt and sod and left to smolder, removing as much oxygen as possible. This is called a reduction firing and produces the beautiful dark colors from the smoke and carbon. We leave it to cool until the following day. I remove the layers of coal, ash, and smoking manure from the top of the pit, revealing fired tiles colored from wood, minerals, and smoke. After the tiles are cool, I can finish the pieces with a variety of mixed media and found objects. Before the firing, I impressed each piece with patterns into the wet clay, now hard and fired, with interesting coloration from the smoke and minerals, I study each piece for suggestions on how it will be finished. I deepen colors with mineralized pigments, apply acrylic sealer, and comb through my stash of beads, gems, found objects, and ephemera. Arranging and rearranging these objects until I'm satisfied with the composition, each assemblage is ultimately born and ready for a new life in a collector's home. I call these pieces Beyond Raku. This one is titled Finding the Key. It's finished with an antique key, pewter, rusty metal, copper, and ceramic found objects, colored with mineralized and smoke pigments. Cedar and Rose features a preserved peace rose grown from my garden, glass beads, pewter and fiber found objects, and colored with mineralized and smoke pigments. Steampunk is one of my favorite pieces from this first Raku series. It has bottle caps, a rusty spike, brass, pewter, ceramic, and nickel foamed objects, including a Civil War button, all finished with mineralized and smoked pigments. Layers is wrapped with silver-plated copper wire. It contains rusty metal, antique sheet music, handmade paper, a carved wooden chopstick, 
and a porcelain and platinum disc. It is also finished with mineralized and smoked pigments.